across Texas. The issue is. I'm Greg Grugan in Houston. I'm Rudy Kosky in Austin. And I'm Stephen Dial in Dallas, and this is Texas, The Issue Is. Decision time for Texans of every political flavor, with the Super Tuesday primary now just hours away. Thus far, early voter turnout in the Lone Star State has been much stronger among Republicans, who are picking sides in a bitter civil war over school choice and relative degrees of conservatism moving forward. I sat down with highly regarded Rice political analyst Mark Jones to lay out the battlefield and the stakes in this highly consequential election. Why is Greg Abbott going after members of the Texas House? Well, there were 21 Republican House members who voted against his school choice legislation. 16 of them are running for re-election, and he's going after 10 of them. And the goal is, I think, twofold. First, oust those individuals so that in 2025 he can pass school choice legislation, as well as send a message to Republican uh, legislators across the board that if you mess with the bull, you get the horns, and that there are consequences to define the governor. Based upon what you know now, what do you see happening on March 5th with Greg Abbott's quest to push through school choice? Ah, uh, I mean, it's tough to tell. I mean, he certainly has spent all the money you need to spend. He has some good candidates he's supporting. I think if he can get six or seven of them uh, defeated, that will be good for him, both in terms of passing legislation in 2025 for school choice, as well as sending a signal uh, to what happens to you if you mess with the governor. Acquitted Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton on what some have called a revenge tour. But I would expect Paxton to overall not be effective in his, if his goal is to oust all of those members or a large proportion who voted against them. Most of those incumbents are going to survive. Let's talk about the one House race that's probably drawing the most attention. That is House Speaker Dade Phelan's attempt to retain his seat over in the uh, Golden Triangle area. What's going on there, Mark? So we've seen pretty much the entire Republican establishment, absent Greg Abbott, go in after Dade Phelan, and Phelan is left more or less on his own, uh, with certainly the Austin lobby backing him, but I think that election is go really going to hinge on whether Phelan's nat natural ties to his community and the capital he's built up with his constituents over the past few years can effectively withstand the onslaught of all of these national and state level forces, which are signaling very clearly to voters in his district to vote for David Covey. Is that race too close to call, Mark? I think right now the field and cubby race is way too close to call. Uh, it's given a lot of power, more power than we've seen recently to voters in one specific Texas House district to effectively determine the course of legislation in the Texas legislature, at least during the next cycle. Because if Phelan is reelected, then we're likely to see a more moderate uh, voice in the legislative process blocking some of the more conservative legislation. If Phelan's defeated, then it's quite possible that we see a much more conservative Republican take his place. All right, Mark Jones, let's look at the Democratic side where the key race. Uh, uh, appears to be the Democratic primary for United mm -hmm. States Senate. We expected a closer battle than has emerged. How has Colin Allred built up this, you know, potentially uh, knockout blow on March 5th? Well, Allred's run an outstanding campaign. He got into the race early and has been running hard ever since. He also has convinced national donors that he is their best chance of defeating Ted Cruz in November. And for national Democrats, the only Senate race where they're actually going to be able to go on the offensive this year in 2024 is in Texas. Really, I think Allred is going to win on March 5th. The only question is, does he win with 55, 60, 65, or 70 percent of the vote? Okay, fellows, my word is vendetta, because that's what so many of these races in the primary are about. Stephen, what's your word? Well, you took a good word, so I'll just say war. Okay, Rudy, lay it on us. Winnebago. Ooh, interesting. Let's leave it there. <laughs> Clearly, there's much to unpack prior to Tuesday, so stay with us. The Fox Texas Trio set to unload on the other side of this break. Welcome back. At stake in Tuesday's primary, nothing short of the heart, soul, and future direction of the Texas Republican Party. Rudy, Mark Jones seems to believe Governor Abbott has a solid shot to dislodge just enough anti-school choice House Republicans to fulfill his vendetta. Do you agree? 
It depends on what type of school choice you're talking about, Greg. I don't think Abbott has enough and has done enough to flip enough seats to get his education savings account plan passed. You see, the big problem is that it's not real school choice, only a limited and very expensive voucher idea. I do think that his statewide road trip revenge tour, however you want to call it, has provided enough traction for a bill that would create universal school choice, that being your tax dollar following your kid to the school system that you want. That's why my word was Winnebago. He's like the governor, a tourist barreling down a two-lane rural road in an oversized RV. Look out, here he comes. But with so much roadkill in the wake, Abbott will have to do a lot of fence mending and bridge building because he has angered a lot of people considering uh, themselves physical conservatives and now they're being called rhinos. That's being tossed out a lot, right? All right, Stephen, it's going to be a tough act to follow, but I'm going to ask you this. Abbott has once again risked a great deal of political capital in his bid to mash a voucher program through the Texas legislature. Will he pull it off this time, and what's the cost? Well, first, yeah, I'm not as eloquent or wordy as Rudy Kosky, so we'll get that out the way. Can Governor Abbott pull it off? Sure. Will he is uncertain, and I'm bouncing off of what Rudy said because this is not an uphill battle. We're just talking about a handful of seats here, and some of these members uh, are retiring, and so he's just trying to get his people in. And so the, the real thing is, the real heart of this is, how many Republicans in, in, at the end of the day are still going to believe that public money should go to public schools. Can he do it? Has he exerted a ton of political capital? Yes, but I don't think he'll be hurt by it if he fails because the border is his bread and butter right now. All right, Texas Attorney General Ken Paxton going after a slew of House Republicans who voted to impeach him. My guess is he'd happily settle for a single win, that being an ouster of House Speaker Dade Phelan. Rudy, what's your take? Ah, uh, contraire. I don't think he gets the speaker. I think Dade Phelan has, uh, Phelan has put together a pretty good-looking ground game in southeast Texas by what I've seen. Uh, I think Paxton's best chance for a win is the state criminal appeals court, where he's trying to unseat three Republicans who did not give him the power to launch his own voter fraud cases that he wants to do without local approval. I don't think that the average voter really understands that the judges were upholding the state constitution, and that is where Paxton, I think, might get at least a partial win. Okay, Stephen, to the Democrats. Looks like North Texan Colin Allred is set to coast through the primary and face Ted Cruz in the fall. Mark Jones talked about his ability to attract national progressive dollars and the absence of Democratic opportunities elsewhere in the country to poach a Republican held Senate seat. Could we actually be looking at a serious race come November? I mean, the Democrats nationally are going to make it a serious race. They're going to throw a ton of money at this race. Ted Cruz, in a conversation on our air, said that months ago, saying that Democrats are going to throw a lot of money at this. But at the end of the day, a Democrat has still not won a statewide elected office in decades in Texas. And we are at a moment in time where the reddest of red meat is out and it's not going anywhere. I mean, we're in a, a time where John Cornyn is being called a rhino, where certain Republicans who might have been considered something else are being called rhinos. And so I just think with more Republican registered voters in the state, more energy and Donald Trump on the ballot, likely, that Colin Alvarez still is going to have a very hard time. Okay, Rudy, on to Washington from whispers of retirement to now running for majority leader. Big week for uh, Senator John Cornyn. Right. You know, last year we were hearing rumblings that the senior Texas senator was looking to head to the back 40. But in the past six months, he seems re-energized. And Thursday, tossing his hat into consideration for the leadership that Mitch McConnell says that he's leading. Cornyn has the resume, but he's also been attacked. As Stephen said, a lot of people calling him a rhino because he initially didn't support Donald Trump. So, uh, you know, it's going to be interesting to how that shakes out. But boy, he's energized. All right, Stephen, your thoughts. 30 seconds. Greg, John Cornyn has the energy, and you can say he's back. Now, while he did say the Republican Party has passed Donald Trump months ago, he's on Trump's side, regardless of he's being called a rhino, and he's taking the gloves off when it comes to Ken Paxton saying, you can't run if you're in prison. All right, well, <laughs> let's leave it there. We're going to watch wow. that one. You can see the interview or any of our past interviews by going to our YouTube pages.
and reach out to us on social media to keep the conversation going. And with the primary vote Tuesday, we're starting to look at the big issues that will take us to November. So don't forget to let us know what you think the issue is.